tonight, I'm going to give you what is in my heart. Um, and there's a lot. So I want to start by telling you who I am. So before I always talk about the work, I want to humanize myself. That's something that a lot of Black women don't get that opportunity to do. Um, so I am a Black woman, first and foremost, who loves Black people and teaches Black kids on purpose. I'm a lover of books, of movies, Halloween, and dressing up with my friends. Um, so you see on the left, me and two of my teacher friends, we all bought the same sweater. And then on the right, I dressed up as Arthur this uh, Halloween. And I found out one of my friends who lives in New York, um, she dressed up as DW. Like this was completely unplanned. I'm a plant mom of almost 30. I am a fluent speaker of African-American vernacular English and academic English. So you're, you're gonna hear both. Uh, me as an educator, I am a third grade teacher. I teach students. I do not call them Ms. Henderson's class because it's not my room. It's our room. So we go by room 112, that's the name of our classroom. And I am born, raised and teaching in Louisville, Kentucky where Brianna Taylor and David McAtee were murdered during a pandemic. I'm a person who doesn't have kids on purpose. That's not a part of my path, but I see myself as a member of my student's village. Um, so this is the message that I wish I can give my room 112 families, um, but I can't. So this is what I'm offering you tonight. And so I wanna start by essential understandings. Um, writing this was emotional. So if you see me getting a little, a little teary, it's my heart. Um, so I'm saying this to parents and people who are also not parents. Um, you and your children are living during a pandemic that has taken the lives of 230,000 people that are mostly black and people of color. You and your children are living during an uprising where we're witnessing black people being murdered during a global pandemic that is killing mostly black and brown folks. So we're seeing a dual genocide right now for black people. Emotions are high. We're also watching as this messy, tense, anxiety inducing election cycle unfolds with no end in sight. I love Instagram. I had to get rid of it and Facebook and Twitter since Monday because I don't know what I'm gonna see and I'm not ready. And you're doing your best and you're killing it. We have to realize that all these things are happening at once. So our, I want you to also think as parents and guardians, y'all were and are your child's first teachers before they came to this brick and mortar space where there is a formal facilitator, you were the teacher. And they still learning right now. It just looks different. And we have to make space for that. It is okay to not know how to ask for help or to be unsure. Again, there's so many things we cannot control right now. We don't know that we don't know. And that's okay. And you have the right to co-construct your child's educational experience. It could have been there before. It might not have been but now you might want to take up that invitation. So you might be wondering, but what you mean? Uh, Co-constructing is building together. You and the teacher are working together on your child's team to give them the best education. So that goes back to me saying I'm a part of the village. That doesn't end when they leave my classroom. I've been grateful to have taught for six years. Um, First, it was room 131. Now it's room 112. They are mine forever. So I have my plant babies and I have my students. They my kids. They know that a lot of my money goes to them. So it's a part of your new responsibility to say, teacher, it's not just you and my child. It's us together. Um, you'll first need to consider what you want from your child's education this year especially if they're remote or hybrid. At my school, we have been remote since March. They gave us a tentative start date to be back and our numbers were too high. So now we just were remote until um, they tell us otherwise. And so I looked at this as having two reflection questions for you to consider. First, what is priority for me? 
What do I or my child or children need? Is that daily live sessions, recorded lessons, daily independent work, consistent feedback, meaning more than once a week, small group instruction, extension or enrichment activities, assessments, sessions that are not just about the academics. You need to think about that and define that for yourself. And so I'm giving you some of what that looks like for room 112. Um, they have daily independent work. I have a lot of parents that work super hard. They have been essential workers since this uh, pandemic first began. They're doing the best they very can. And a lot of my students are doing this by themselves. Some are in daycare. They're not having that consistent support they need. So one thing I decided I can do, doing a table of contents is easy. That way they know exactly what's expected of them every day. That includes, we don't have school today, y'all. Please don't come. I'm not going to be here. It also looks like daily feedback. I had a parent, um, actually two, the very first week say, I know y'all getting to know each other, but like what they doing? I'm like, okay, well, if we were back in a classroom, we would just be doing getting to know you activities. That wasn't enough. And that's okay. So then I decided um, they're going to get daily work and I'm going to look at their work every single day. So these are some of the private comments I've left in their assignments. Always giving feedback, but also like we're talking human to human. They can send me messages too. So sometimes they'll ask me like, um, what did you mean by that? Why is this slide say 80? But I'm always giving compliments with that. Um, I want to let them know that I am reviewing the work, but I'm also grateful they're turning it in and doing what they can. I had a student um, who every single session for the first three weeks had something to say. And I'm like, I'm not giving them a space to just say something. And then we had a blank slide and I'm like, I have artists in this room. Why not get them to create something? So I asked three students when he decided to make something. Um, so at the very end of our live sessions, every single day, they have a chance to say whatever they want to. So during that, we've had birthday shout outs. Um, they've shared Fortnite screen names. They just said, hey, uh, giving each other compliments. They've told me some things they need more of. And they just ask me questions like today. Hey, did you vote? Who'd you vote for? I'm like, y'all, I'm not ready to have this conversation but I still provided them that opportunity and that space to do that. Um, Fun Friday was something I needed to do for me. I am not an educator, honestly, who cares about standards? My students are gonna get where they need to get. Them being masters of specific skills is not gonna be what gets them where they need to be. That's secondary. Building relationships, knowing who they are as people, that's first. So I decided for myself, although I have two sessions in the morning and three in the afternoon, I was going to add on a sixth session because I just want to talk to these people. Because to me, before they are my students, they are people who I'm blessed to teach and learn from. So we every Friday, we have fun Friday slash lunch bunch. Um, so this past week, we did kind of a revealing of our Halloween costumes um, so I always ask what you eating on. Sometimes people have snacks, other times people don't. And then we just did two clues and guess each other's costumes. That time is not about work. It might be, hey, y'all, y'all got this to turn in by like Sunday. Okay, let's, let's do life because they need that even in this virtual space. Um, I also decided to do a question of the day to get to know one another. Um, and that's the way we start our session. So Monday is always tell me something about your weekend or that you want to share. Fridays, what's good? What went well for you? Just tell me something. Um, when we were back in the classroom, I had a black mathematician board where I just showed them um, people in their past, but also people currently doing math that love it so much they decided to study it deeper. Um, and so Fridays, I have a black mathematician they can see. And I just ask them, what'd you learn this week? Do you have anything you want to celebrate in math? And just give them that space and share that. 
Um, other days, we just I pull just random questions for kids from Google. Like they can be silly. Would you rather questions? Um, when the Brianna Taylor uh, hot mess of a verdict came out that no one was really being charged, we had the conversation about that. Asking if you could change anything about Louisville, what would you change? When I found out we were not returning back to school when they told us we were, how are you feeling about continuing school like we are? Just giving them that space to do what they need to have that conversation, even if it's five minutes in our live session. And I try to make it like class. So as they come in, I, I greet them by name individually. Hey, Kimani. Hey, Summer. What's up? How are you? And we have agreements. So these are the things that I need from them and also the things that um, I think they deserve to have a space where they're learning, focused, not distracted, not having people talk over one another and me not being interrupted. Like being on a Zoom call, any type of a video session, people eating, that that is something that annoys me. So I'm like, I can't. Drinks, always. Like I always have my water bottle with me. I have it right now. Like I don't play these games. Um, so just letting them know we do have structure but I, I do acknowledge that you are a human being. Um, the second question you might wanna ask yourself are, what resources or supports do I or my children need? Um, you might not know a lot. I found out a lot of my families I thought were tech savvy, were not. Uh, so do I know how to navigate the platforms the teacher is using, like Google Classroom, Nearpod, Kahoot, whatever they're doing? Do I know the feedback system the teacher is using? Do I understand how to access the feedback? Um, the teacher is giving, because a lot of times we are giving feedback, they don't even know that we're doing it or where to look for it. Do I understand the schedule and expectations the teacher already has? Do I need a tutorial uh, with the supports that are already in place? And are there more supports or resources that I need? And so that looks like in room 112, I have made several videos. A lot of these are individual for individual students. Uh, again, my kids did not know how to use Google Slides at all. They didn't uh, have family members that could always be right there during their sessions. So I made a video on how to make a diagram. We've been working on multiplication for most of our school year. They didn't know how to do that, like to show it on their slides. I made the video for it. Uh, how to do an insert button <laughs> on slides how to log into Google Classroom. Like these are the supports my families needed. So it took me five minutes to do that. It, it was worth it. I'm someone who likes positive feedback. Most kids do as well. Um, so I give them that space. So during our live sessions, we have reviews of what to expect in their independent work. I go over their schedule, um, what time they're gonna meet with me or the the following day or in the afternoon, uh, kudos to people who have been turning in their work. It's an expectation for us to turn in their work every day. I wanna see that you're doing something and I also wanna see if there's a misconception I can clear up. So these are the two um, GIFs that I use and I, every day, shout out to these people for doing the thing I already asked them to do, but like you need that compliment and hopefully more people join in. Y'all, we've had, we have 24 kids, 18 have turned in their work yesterday. Shout out to y'all. And like, they feel good about that and they get to praise each other. Um, you might also be thinking, what can I do with the supports a teacher already has? So this is the biggest thing I wish I could tell my families. Make sure you know your child's schedule and they're not just coming to the schedule, the session, they're actively participating. I'm that teacher, I don't wanna call you out. And I've said this to my kids before. Like, honestly, I said it today. I don't wanna call you by name, but I need to hear some different voices. There's 20 kids on this session right now. I'm hearing from four. You can use that chat, but you better say something to me because I know that you know what you're doing. Also, just letting your child work by themselves first. If you're doing the work, I can tell, like I have a student who barely participates, but all his work is correct. I know he cannot do it because when I've talked to him one-on-one, -on -one, he has no idea what we're learning. 
Um, check your child's feedback and make sure it gets completed if it's possible. Um, so in the previous slides, I showed you the specific feedback I give. If you can change it, do that. If you have questions, ask. Uh, and it might be helpful to see what times and methods of communication are best for that teacher. I am working really hard uh, at continuing my work-life balance. I have very strict boundaries. And it annoys me when people dishonor them. 9 to 5.30, I got you. I'll even take a call even though I'm not about that life. I hate talking to people on the phone. I really got to love you to do it. But if you call me and you call me at 8.30, I'm not going to answer you. It's not an emergency. Nobody died because you wouldn't be calling me if somebody died. Therefore, I'm not going to answer you. So just honoring that boundary and that space that teacher has. Um, and there's a lot you can do to support your child and extend what they're already learning. Um, so you might decide to seek out other families in the same grade or the same school for more supports. And you might also use the time that they're not in class, they're not working independently to make real world connections. So like I said, we're working on multiplication right now. Um, so for that, if uh, the child does like a scavenger hunt around the home to see where they can find equal groups or arrays, creating them with household supplies. Um, central idea is something that we do every day. We don't think about it. We don't call it that. So just asking like, okay, so what is that book that you're reading mostly about? What's that video game you're watching and that you're playing mostly about? The TikTok video you make in, tell me about it. Give me a one sentence summary about it. And so here is my closing. School has not been a place that's consistently honored your child as a person first, especially for black kids, indigenous kids and kids of color. And this is a time where you can work both with and without the teacher to provide that space. And I invite you to take that up. Twitter is the best place to find me after Thursday. I don't know how long I'm gonna do this uh, fast, um, but if you need to reach me, that's the best place. My email is also here.